If you're finding this channel today and finding this video today, then you're probably here to learn how to create the colors that you want to. Ever since 1706, when Sir Isaac Newton was attributed to the first color wheel, people have been trying to navigate the color wheel. You've probably seen a lot of different maps and different conical shapes and spheres that attribute, co attribute to color. However, if you don't have an idea how to read that map, your ride of the color wheel is probably going to go something like that. Let's take a little journey. I started out making myself a couple charts. The first one thing I did was made myself a color wheel. I used six colors. Um, it's diazonine purple, uh, thalo blue, thalo green, medium yellow, crimson red, and quinacridone red to mix that color wheel up. Notice how the middle gets very, very dark. Then I took and got some primary yellow, primary red, and primary blue um, from, a, from a tubes. And I mixed up the color shades that you could get in between there. And you'll notice that I am making a triangle and not a wheel. Um, these are the colors that are possible to mix between these shades. Then I'm going to draw some lines on the color wheel that I made. It's not necessary to have an airbrush. This will work for any medium. Um, but anyway, I drew the triangle out. And that represents the spots where my primary colors intersect with my color wheel. And now the other lines that I am drawing are lines that are from the points of the initial colors that I mixed up, the six colors that I made my color wheel. And you're going to see that this is going to create a hexagon. All the colors that I can create will exist within those lines depending on the colors that I used. So why wouldn't we just buy all the colors we need? Well, there's millions of color combinations out there. And when you start to do the math on that, and my pockets look like this. So this is the line I drew from the red to the blue, which I kind of guessed roughly where that red and blue landed on the color wheel that I made. And these are the colors that I was able to create with these two shades of color. So if you look... By drawing that line there, I had a very good idea of where these colors would land by mixing them. I, I didn't need to mix these colors first to know approximately what color I would be able to create. When they say that you can mix any color with red, yellow, and blue, well, that is true to an extent in that the hue you've created, an orange hue, with this red, and this yellow, however, this orange hue will never be able to get to the vibrancy past this line. Doesn't matter what you do to it, mixing this color here and this color here, those two colors, you will never be able to increase the vibrancy or the saturation by opening up the colors that I mixed when I drew the color wheel I was able to stay in vibrancy in this range and so I only lost some of the vibrant colors on this very outer edge out here which we technically didn't even create Bill, you said we were going to work on three dimensions. Well, hold your horses there, Mr. Overachiever. I bet they loved you in school, didn't they? Anyway, I am going to, next week, we're going to get into value. So don't run off yet because we're still working on the same hue and saturation right now. But all these colors are the same. 
I'm working on a multiple stack color wheel that I'm going to be giving away to you guys. I'll have more details on that next week. So, you know, you guys keep up with that. These are all the same colors, but they are at different values. And that will bring in our third dimension next week. But we're not done right yet. We're still working on hue and saturation. It's important to remember when you bring that line across that wheel, the closer you get to the center, the closer you get to gray or brown. So let's do a real world example. I'm gonna grab my quinacridone red and my phthalo green. And I'm going to try to match the lips on this photograph, which is a painting portrait that I had done previously. That's not my actual painting, but I had done a po uh, portrait of this particular person before so <clears throat> I use those two shades and mix them up and let's see how we do on this uh, mixing with just those two colors there's a little close-up inside the isolation window of what it will look what it looks like inside my isolation window you can see the piece of paper that I'm waving around behind that that's the piece of paper I put my paint on uh, it's sometimes much easier to look at colors in isolation, and that's it outside of an isolation window. Again, how did I get there? In my mind, I drew the line, thinking that my color would be in this general vicinity. for my target. Here was my target. So if that is my target, I was able to get there just like that. I could have also gotten there if I had this purple and this orange we could have intersected here and we could have intersected there and technically you could continue that all the way about if you had all the mixes of colors you could always There's places that different colors will intersect on the color wheel. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for stopping by here. I'm Bill Kennedy with W. Leon Artistry since I didn't introduce myself at the beginning of the video this time. And if you guys liked our video, hey, please give me a thumbs up, share the video, spread the news with other people. Uh, remember, if you liked it, to hit the subscribe button down below. And, you know, if you didn't like it, you know, you can always give me the thumbs down. I mean, that that's all right with me. But anyway, y'all have a great day. We appreciate you stopping by. Bye.